Marhaba, and welcome to the Matrix Green Pill, where real people connect. Hello, and welcome back to the Matrix Green Pill podcast. My name is Hilmarie Hutchison, and I'm the CEO of Matrix Public Relations. Today, I'm joined by my lovely colleague and co host, Namita. Welcome, Namita. Hey, Hilmarie. You know, I'm really excited to be here today. Since I was a kid, I was always fascinated by radio jockeys. The way they talk so spontaneously, have such a great presence of mind, and put a smile on the listener's face no matter what they are going through. So today is indeed special as we get to speak to one of the most popular radio presenters at UAE's number one Bollywood radio station, City 1016, Mariam Kisar. While many of you may already recognize her voice, today you will get to know more about the person behind that voice. Wow, how exciting. <laughs> Exciting to be talking to our very first radio jockey here on the Matrix Greenfield podcast. It will certainly be fun to turn the tables and have Mariam as the guest instead of her usual role as the presenter. I am really looking forward to hearing your story, Mariam. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Hilmarie. Thank you so much, Namita, for such an amazing introduction. You know, I'm always on the other side, like Hilmarie correctly said, and it's so exciting to be on this side of the interview. So thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we are so happy and so excited to, to do this with you today. Absolutely. So as Namita mentioned, many people in Dubai are already familiar with you as an RJ, but maybe they do not know about your journey to where you are now. And if I'm not wrong, your journey took a a sharp detour because of a certain contest. Maybe you can tell us about that as well. So I used to love listening to the radio. While listening to the radio, going to college, I took part in one of their contests called Flight City 1016. And that contest basically means taking us to another country with the team, with the entire team. So I took part thinking that I'm never going to get it. I'm never going to win. I still took a shot. I won. Super. I w- <laughs> I went to Prague with them and then there was no turning back. <laughs> wow. Wow, amazing. Yeah. So you uh, won so the Mariam. contest. Yes, I won the contest and then with the team, you know, while taking the city tour, they asked me to sing. My friend along with me, she also won the contest by the way. She told everybody, "Oh my god, this girl can sing. Why don't you just tell her to sing?" I'm like, I was ah, a little cool. nervous. And then I sang and that's that's it. You know, they kept calling in, me in for shows and then they asked me for to audition for City 1016. Excellent. Great. Wow. So Mariam, on your social media platforms, you showcase mm-hmm. your singing talent with some lovely covers of popular songs. How did you discover that talent for singing? So I always loved dancing, actually. It wasn't really singing. Mm-hmm. And my oh. father loves, loves, loves singing. He's a singer himself. and he used to always teach my younger sister Alifia okay. and i always used to get jealous because she used to get that extra time with dad and i'm like no nope, that's not happening i'm going to try and like kind of push myself into this so i started sitting with dad even though dad is not trained we you know we sing along and then he taught us the little bit that he knew and that's where i started my singing very nice i think so on the topic of covers i've seen your really cool cover of the popular song despacito by louis fonz <laughs> why as you call it Despacito with a twist. So how did you yeah. come up with that concept? Okay, so actually that entire year uh where I think it was 3 years ago, a lot of covers were all mashups and they were all doing good. I wanted to do something very different. Despacito was trending back then. I'm like, okay, I have to do this. I sat down with a friend and I started humming the song and because I love singing Bollywood songs, I right. tried and, you know, mashed that up and it actually worked. So I was very very glad that it did. Very we cool. Forward with that. Yeah. And it worked it came out very well so well done Thank you thank you So thank how you. do you choose which songs you want to cover I know you said Despacito was very popular which it was at the time but besides that how how would you choose your songs you want to cover Like a lot of us know music is a stress buster singing is also a stress buster whether you're a good singer or not when you sing you feel good and during the week I keep humming a certain song and for some reason it's always different every week and I use that song to make a cover every week called Mariam on Mariam's Monday and nice. uh, I feel like it's something you need to put out like what you feel about that particular song what are you feeling that particular week and that just comes out whenever I sing my Mariam's Monday cover and that's how I think about it I actually don't think about it that's how it is it just comes <laughs> to you naturally it just comes it just comes amazing uh, so now uh, Mariam we know that you have quite the musical family your sister Alifia is also a wonderful singer is there any sibling rivalry between you two not at all in fact uh, the only reason we find 
fight is because I keep telling her to make more covers and she's like, oh my God, I'll do it. I'll do it. That's the only thing. But uh, otherwise, not at all. Uh, the first time I sang on stage, she's the one who helped me uh, with the oh, song. Lovely. So not at all. That's, yeah. that's nice. <laughs> Great. So you've won uh, the best singing competition in the Middle East back in 2017, The Voice UAE. How was that whole experience? Uh, so I have to give you a little bit of a backstory. I always thought, you know, I was always very scared taking part in competitions because I'm not mm-hmm. a trained singer. And yeah. I always felt like, you know, I'm never going to, win why why should I always you know why should I put myself out there and my aunt was here from Canada and she pushed me to do this she's like it's fine if you're not trained uh Sunidhi Chauhan one of the biggest Bollywood singers she she -hmm. wasn't trained when she first came in so I took that and I'm like you know what it's going to be an experience why not and I just went for that uh, audition and well things went very well I was trained by a few amazing singers there and it honestly was the best experience you know till date amazing amazing so so now let's talk about another one of your many talents you mentioned earlier your dancing so what Mm -hmm. kind of dancing do you do and how did you get into dancing honestly I know for a fact that I always kept dancing to any tune from the, I think before I started walking, I said, I started moving on the spot to any music that (laughs) mom used to play. So I think I had it in me, I guess. But uh, I joined a Vega dance creation just after college. I used to love dancing. I used to take part in a lot of activities. And uh, I felt that that was one thing that I had that would you know that could just free me from a lot of tension going around as well just like singing dancing also has that and you you give me any tune and I'll start dancing to it so I didn't really discover uh, anything I wouldn't say I'm the best dancer but it just makes me feel good and that's how I started moving forward when it came to dancing I grabbed any opportunity lovely it's a good Good. outlet (laughs) yeah So what type of dance form is your favorite, Maria? Uh, I would say Bollywood and hip hop, like Bolly Hop, because I love Bollywood. Uh, Absolutely. We all do. (laughs) Absolutely. right. I love Bollywood and I love, love, love hip hop. I think hip hop is a form that, you know, you can express yourself in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Let it be lyrical hip hop. Let it be just just for the fun of it. So I love that form as well. So, yeah, Bolly Hop is the form I love and I do. So let's change direction a little bit and talk a bit about social media. Uh, Mm. With social media being such a huge part of our lives, what would you say is your favorite thing about social media? So just like radio, even though you'd say radio is a one-way communication, we get to talk to a lot of our listeners. The same thing with social media. I love the fact that we can connect with the people who are like-minded and people who love your work. And of course, people who are genuinely your fans or your friends, they'll come back and tell you exactly where you can improve. So to showcase your talent, to talk to like-minded people, I think that's what I love, love, love about social media. Very nice. And do you have a favorite platform? (laughs) So it's actually very funny because I used to love Instagram and I still do. I still, still, still do. Uh, but I recently joined TikTok and I thought I'd never be a part of it. (laughs) (laughs) I never thought I'd be a part of it because I thought that's not where my target audience is, but I'm enjoying TikTok quite a lot. I mean, a lot of creativity, uh, you know, you see on TikTok and I get to show my creativity on TikTok as well. So I think TikTok for now. Yeah. (laughs) So since you're talking about TikTok, let me, I was going to come to that question later on, but now I'm going to ask you this. Um, So we've all noticed you are quite a fan of creating funny TikTok videos, which (laughs) I might say have made us laugh. Um, So have you considered comedy as a possible career or acting? Yes. I have actually considered acting, not comedy, but just acting Mm -hmm. as a whole. Um, I do a lot of the Priyanka Chopra, the lot of Alia Bhatt, uh, you know, scenes at home in front of my mirror. So I wouldn't say no. Yeah, I'm just hoping and I'm, well, my fingers are crossed that something comes up and, you know, I get to meet people who I can talk to in terms of acting and TV. Sure, sure. And since we are talking about social media, we cannot not talk about the trolls. Have you encountered a lot of haters on your social media? Uh, Not a lot of haters, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, because I love constructive criticism and I don't even get that a Mm. lot. 
um so i'm hoping that a lot of people come to me and tell me where i can you know do better other than my friends i want more people to tell me that but mm. trolls in the sense recently a video of mine went viral okay. uh it was a tiktok video it was a, it was uh, my sister and i we jumped into the video and we just started hugging each other it was a very mm-hmm. um natural cute thing according to me mm-hmm. but you know how trolls are they take things to a whole different New level, level yeah, sure. yeah so and they took that video up they posted up on like at least 35 to 40 meme pages that had mm-hmm. about a million to 2 million followers oh my uh, god my cousins yeah my cousins all the way from india asked me to delete the video and it was already deleted and i didn't know mm-hmm. what to do because i can't mm-hmm. get in touch with all the meme owners meme page yeah. owners mm-hmm. and ask them to delete it but yeah i mean it died down now so okay. you know stuff like this you just got to yeah. be very careful yeah sure yeah. sure of course wow that must have been quite an experience though <laughs> not so funny oh, to yeah. experience that. and that was when i just started tiktok so i was just thinking twice uh, whether i should have been there or not. <laughs> yeah you think twice about what you're going to post next time right exactly my goodness oh. not not so funny So as uh, we mentioned in the introduction you are now a well-known radio presenter here in the UAE. So how did you get into being an RJ? Was it something you had always wanted to do? I knew I wanted to get into the entertainment field. I knew that it had to do something with singing or dancing or acting. I did not really think of be- becoming a radio presenter. but i know for a fact that somewhere if i got the opportunity i would definitely take it i used to work for a marketing company from dubai all the way to sharjah so i had 2 hours every day in the car oh, wow. i used to listen <laughs> i used to listen to every radio presenter i used to try and imitate them copy them see you know the way they modulate their voice uh mm-hmm. and for some reason it just helped me with my audition like i never even knew that something like this would happen and i just grabbed the opportunity but i knew that i wanted to get into the entertainment field into something and but mm-hmm. was it difficult to adjust to being live on radio that would terrify me honestly uh, it was because the first time i sat in the studio i did not i was very confused about how to use the console right so mm-hmm. my boss was there she told me once and then she told me i'm going to leave you because if i'm here you will never do it on your own wow. my goodness <laughs> <laughs> so so she left me immediately after the first time i went on air so the second link link is something that you do uh on the radio every time you talk that's called a link on the radio so mm-hmm. the second link i went on air and that's it i was alone so oh, goodness <laughs> it, it was it was the fact that i was just kept there it actually helped me that pressure helped. by fire my goodness that, that <laughs> <was>. <laughs> yeah. so, so can you yes. tell us a little bit about the life of a rj so yes it is fun it is you know somewhat a glam world because you want to put your you want to put yourself out there you want to look pretty because radio is also very visual now you know especially mm. in the uae so every time for me I, because i'm a person who does not like getting ready i used to i had to adjust <laughs> to that bit but life as an rj let me tell you it's it's fun because every rj that i know especially in the team they love their work so it's not oh. really work there are days where you feel like oh my god what am i doing i just want to <laughs> quit yeah there are days but it's only because there's a lot more pressure because you're in the public right you're in front Absolutely. of a lot of people all the yeah. time yeah and the scrutiny and, and there's a, exactly and there's a lot of pressure on you so those those are i mean those days are there but i feel like it's it's a world that when you enter there's no going back and once an rj always an rj i love the fact that i'm a radio presenter here in the ua especially and uh, yeah i mean that's about it it's it's fantastic it is important to love what you do no doubt and so are you busy outside of the times when you're on the, uh, live on the radio i mean socially do you have to do a lot of things to to keep that going or is it just when you recording in the studio i mean when you live so, on radio yeah so because radio is so visual as well we have a lot of uh, clients that come to us and ask us to visit you know their a uh, place to visit their restaurant to visit their theater so we just have to go there we have a lot of media visits that we need to do i'm sure you guys have the same thing exactly we do too <laughs> exactly we do too like we they ask us to just come and cover it in the most fun manner possible mm. so we need to be a lot more social in terms of you know capturing 
what's happening in Dubai, the events that are happening in Dubai. Um, and yeah, a lot of events. When Bollywood stars come here, if there are any concerts, we get to open it, we get to host it. So yeah, outside radio as well, we have a lot of work, obviously in the pandemic right now, with the situation that we're in right now, uh, that has come to a stop. But uh, yeah, mm-hmm. otherwise, a lot of things happen outside the studio as well. That Great. brings up an interesting question about the pandemic. Did you have to, did you continue to, to go into the studio to do your your RJ or did you, could you do that from home? So we had to go back to the studio. There was, we never had a day that we could stay at home, but our company uh, disinfects the entire studio in the middle of the show, after the show, before the show. And they, you know, they, they just make sure that every presenter getting in has their own pop filter, their own mic filter. And we've just been taken care of very, very, very well, uh, which is why we all agreed. And they asked us the question if we were okay to go back into the studio. And we all agreed because we know how they were taking care of us. The entire company took care of us very, very well. Excellent. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Mariam, what are your favorite and least favorite things about being an RJ? Okay, so favorite is because uh, you can use your creativity um, in the most fun, in the most random way ever and connecting with the audience, right? You, sure. The fact that radio works on relatability. Hmm. Whenever you say something relatable, uh, it always works on radio. And, you know, you get to talk to people who are just like you, uh, who have gone through the same upbringing. And, you know, it's just fun to talk to them as well. Um, mm-hmm. So I like connecting with people. When it comes sure. to the pressure, I mean, the, the things that I don't really like, I would say, it's not about like, but I, I think it's the pressure. Not res- it's yeah, enjoy. Pressure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. It's, it's the added pressure. It's mm-hmm. just because uh, I know my friends can post literally anything they want on social media and be okay with it but I have to think twice even Mm. now for instance I'll just give you an example Uh, it's we're allowed to go to a restaurant we're allowed Mm -hmm. to go with our families we're allowed to go outside but I wouldn't personally post that on my social media just because you know I don't want to in any way try Mm -hmm. and bring out anything that's well, not frowned upon, but I don't want anyone to do that along with me. Mm-hmm. If they're staying at home, I rather them stay at home. Mm-hmm. So I would not show sure, sure. that. I would yeah. think twice. Again, it's be- because you're under more scrutiny than the regular person. Exactly. Also, it comes with a, a big responsibility as well, because like you said, especially in this part of the world, RJs are looked upon as celebrities. So they have a very yeah. strong influencing power. So, yeah. <laughs> You guys um, make me feel so good. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, you are a celebrity for us. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, Mariam, what are some of the benefits and challenges that come with the job? I know you kind of uh, have shared some light upon that, but if you would like yeah. to share some more details. So, benefits. Um, I personally love attention. So, I get that. You didn't know it <laughs> I I love, 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 love that. I love that, you know, when you're walking on the road and you're walking with your parents, somebody comes to you and says, oh my God, I know you. You know, it's a proud moment for my parents as well. Sure. And, uh, you know, I like talking to them. You know, I just, they listen to me on air, but when they say, when they see you in front and go like, oh my God, I love that I've seen your face as well. It (sighs) makes me feel like, okay, you know what? I must have said something on the radio that, you know, they loved and they could relate to. And that's why they love me, which is great. Sure. I mean, everybody loves being loved. So of course, <laughs> I do yeah, too. Sure. Uh-huh. In terms of um, the challenges, I would mm. say there's an added pressure even, uh, you know, inside. there's a lot of competition. Mm. So you've always got to be on your toes. And honestly, that's what with everybody. I'm sure it's with you. I'm sure it's Absolutely. with any company. Sure, yes. An individual. But even on our personal pages, we've got to be... Uh, we got to make sure that we are on top of everything. Mm. Uh, we got to make sure that we post all the time because with radio comes added pressure of being, you know, being the face of radio, right? So our videos up on our social media pages, personal social media pages, that is an added pressure because sometimes you mm. just don't want to do it, but you've just got to be on top of everything. Yeah, sure. So that's there. Absolutely. So you, we we know you've had some very interesting experiences in your life so far, as we've heard. So what would you say has been the highlight of your career so far? So the highlight, okay, so the highlight of my career is 
when I got a chance to sing with one of the biggest, biggest music directors of Bollywood, uh, A.R. Rahman. Um, wow I, yeah like, very cool he came too, right? to, he came to the office he came to the office so it wasn't like it was in front of an yeah. audience it mm-hmm. was a one-on-one it was his uh his group his team and it was my team and I got a chance to perform in front of him when he entered the office wow and so uh, cool. yeah the fact that you know this was post pre pandemic pre covid when mm-hmm. he shook my hand and said good job so i was like oh, oh my god wow. <laughs> wow. this was the biggest this was the highlight this was the biggest sure. biggest thing did you wash your hands after that no that was really it was before <laughs> covid <laughs> before covid yeah so no, i did i'm just trust, i'm i'm saying because he's such a big celebrity you exactly. know you don't want to exactly. kind of wash your hands after he i did not your want hands. to i did not <laughs> exactly. want to i want to keep looking at him <laughs> exactly and do you have a recording of it i do i actually oh, do okay. i will i will show it i'll share that link with you it's amazing yeah, super. Amazing. That would be lovely. So as Namita yeah. said in the beginning, um, lots of um, young people or kids dream about being on the radio one day. So what tips would you give to somebody who whose dream it is to become an RJ? Okay, so one tip is listen to radio. I feel a lot of people think radio is easy. And I know a lot of people have told me myself, like, oh, you know what? You have a three hour show. Uh, you play songs. I mean, it should be easy right and it's it's very hard to you know make to explain that how difficult it is because you've got to use your reflexes exactly, you've got to be yeah. very very present in what's happening there could be a lot of things that can go wrong on radio especially mm. when you do it live so it's very hard to explain that so if you feel radio is easy that's a big like a big red cross right there uh you need to know that it takes a lot of work and just that y- try and practice your modulation and try and practice talking to people. Uh, Well, not practice talking to people, but you know, on radio, it's quite different. Um, Mm -hmm. Just have that kind of conversation, try and uh, be very well versed with what's happening around the world. And yeah, that's about it. Just keep practicing, keep listening to the radio. That's my tip. That okay them. hopefully somebody will will take that on board and we'll get some new, new rjs coming up for sure <laughs> uh, so mariam this whole covid19 situation changed a lot for many of us how did it change things for you personally and professionally so professionally it actually became quite easy because i did not have to cover an eight hour shift i just have to go in for mm-hmm. a three hour shift and come out so that's great um <laughs> Uh, So I just have to do my show. Usually a lot of people don't know this, but we have a proper eight hour shift. So because I do the night show, I go from 4 p.m. up until 12 a.m. every day. So that's my regular shift. Oh, Um, yeah. But because of the show, I just do uh, just because of the uh, because of COVID-19, I just do a 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. shift. Personally, how it has changed. Honestly, I think I've sanitized Mm-hmm. myself five times already and it's My just goodness. 11 a.m today <laughs> so, <laughs> i think we've all just become like clean so used to doing that yeah, yes. yeah, sure, so so sure. used to do it is doing it exactly and you also think about the people around you right mm. um so you're just very very careful about what you touch whenever you go out you got to come in through all the clothes in the washing machine so these things have changed uh, sure. quite a bit quite a bit yeah tell us one of your proudest moments during your journey till now one of my proudest moment um when Rukh khan mm-hmm. remembered my name oh yeah. so oh. so funny story actually remembered in the sense i'll explain this to you he came into the studio the first mm-hmm. day to promote his film uh, to promote his movie zero okay and uh, the very next day we had to host him on the stage the global village stage mm-hmm. and global village has about 100,000 yeah. people there right in front of the main of stage course. i'm sure you yeah. know that yes yes, yes. Uh, yeah sure. so i thought he's not going to remember me the next day right okay but he came on stage and there were already two presenters on stage and i had to take it forward i come on stage and he's like hello mariam in front of 100,000 oh people oh my god wow man. and you wow. learn a lot from sharukh khan especially when he remembers your name even the next day it's it's a huge thing yeah yeah As very humble of course it has yeah, yeah. <laughs> amazing wow great good experience very so, very good a question i like to ask is um what are one what is one thing that you do on a daily basis regardless of how busy you are? I dance. 
Ah, you're you're athlete. Sure. I I do dance. Yes, like I, but it's not it's not like I'm looking at a choreography and dancing. Mm-hmm. I I just go all out. Whatever comes to me, if it's contemporary, contemporary. Um, I listen to the music that I love, and I just keep dancing. See, and wow. it's not. I don't think of working out. It's not about the working out bit. It's just yeah. a nice stress buster. Sure, sure. Nice, amazing. Can you please give us your favorite life lesson quote? Do you have and any story that is relevant in your life based on this quote? Best quote. Hmm. Give me two minutes. I'm. I. I know this. Sure. Because I uh-huh. actually go. I just. I know this because I use this a lot. The fact. Okay. Yeah. So there's a quote. I don't know if I'm saying this correctly. Mm-hmm. But the fact that, um, and I'll tell you why it might sound very cliche right now, but the fact that everything is going to be okay, and I'll tell you yeah. why I'm saying this, yeah. it's because I um, personally, in my life, my mm-hmm. my father, um, there was a time where he was without a job. My my mom mm-hmm. was without a job. Uh, me and my sister, my sister and I, we were both studying. My parents did not give up on us. We were still kids. Yeah. My mom comes to me uh, and tells me, you know what? We give you this amount of pocket money every month, uh, but we can't do that anymore. I just mm-hmm. want you to uh, make. I just want you to know that things are going to be okay, and we're going to come back to normal. Wow. My father, yeah, my father and mother, they they worked so hard for five years, so 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 hard when they did not have a job, uh, and they were just getting there. They were just getting a little better, and they come back to me and say, "You know what? Things are better now. Here's your pocket money, just the same as last time. Just know that things will get better. Do not lose hope." Oh, and that's so one life yeah. lesson. Yeah, that's one. What life an lesson. amazing example it. for you as well. Yeah, absolutely, Never and that's up. something we all absolutely. need to. Yeah, we all need to keep that in mind, especially in these trying times. Exactly. It's all going to be okay. <laughs> it is all going to be okay. Yeah, yeah that's sure. an excellent quote. So, what's next for Mariam? What's your future looking like? What my future is looking like. So, in terms of radio, so two things. In terms of radio, it would be maybe doing a daytime. shift maybe doing a breakfast show or a mid morning show i love 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 doing those shows as well nice uh, so that's a that's a step ahead and when it comes to radio and uh, just career wise uh, personally um, i would say tv so my next thing my next stop is doing something in tv maybe an ad maybe it could be a mm-hmm. tv show something in the uae when it comes to all the tv channels that are hiring i hope Ooh, people are listening this right yeah, now. yeah 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 <laughs> looking forward to that <laughs> surely fingers sure. crossed so this is a Absolutely. shout out for for any interview opportunities for you <laughs> yeah and yes, since you absolutely. have so many different talents i'm sure someone is going to pick up to pick you up soon uh, for an ad oh, or something hopefully. on the tv uh, that's going to happen soon <laughs> hopefully. hopefully so mariam while you are an inspiration for many out here who mm-hmm. is your inspiration and why okay so my inspiration is actually there are actually two people if mm-hmm. you don't mind me talking about of both course. of them yeah, of sure. course um so the first is jonita gandhi now i'll tell you who jonita gandhi mm-hmm. uh she is a, she was a youtuber okay and uh, she kept she kept posting amazing youtube covers and i used to follow her back then mm-hmm. ar rahman uh saw her youtube cover took her in his team and now she is a playback singer she does um she does shows with ar rahman i got a chance Amazing. to interview her and i just feel like looking at her life never give up i mean she's done many 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 covers and look where she is she just kept going absolutely wow so, so never give Johnny up gandhi's one exactly never give up That's another quote there as well. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. another one uh, another person is my father. Mm. Mm. Um he loved singing and he always tells me he's like I see my singing talent, I see whatever my inspiration, my aspirations, uh mm-hmm. everything in you. I see sure. that you're taking it forward. and uh, i love that and he's the one who always tells me he's my best critic he always tells me he's like you know what mariam you're doing this wrong this is not great do this better and i put up everything after asking my father so i think he's another inspiration looking at his hard work the way he has come up he's another one that i always look up to 
in my yeah. life. Great. Uh, Mariam, tell us about one mistake you made and what you learned from that experience. Uh, the one mistake I made was the fact that I thought, like I said, I thought mm-hmm. radio was easy. <laughs> <laughs> so you learned well, that. Again, <laughs> but this was way before, this was way, way, way before um, I was asked to audition for radio. Mm-hmm. Um, this was just when I used to listen to it. I used to go like, okay, you know what? They just play songs. They talk for a minute. That's it. <laughs> easy peasy. Oh what my if... God. Yeah, but this was way, way, way before. This was, I think, five years ago when I was still in college. Sure. Hmm. Uh, but when I started listening, like properly listening to the radio, uh, trying to imitate each and every radio uh, personality, mm-hmm. Um, that's when I realized that, you know what, this is it's not, a not so easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so along, I, uh, along similar lines, so looking back in time, is there anything hmm. in your life that you would have done differently? Anything I would have done differently? Um, so something that I do different, very different actually, was I would train myself. Um, my dad did the same mistake. I would, I think I'm doing the same mistake. Um, I would definitely train myself and I'm, I know it's not too late, but I feel like if I trained myself earlier, I would have been more open to, uh, you know, auditioning for maybe a playback, uh, you know, for a playback song in Bollywood, or mm-hmm. I would have taken part in more competitions. I would put myself more, basically just do 50% more of what I'm doing right now in terms of sure. confidence. So, so you mean, so by that, you mean to have professional training, right? Exactly. Yeah. So if mm. there is a parent with a child out there that has some talent, you would recommend that they would take that child for, for training as early as possible. Absolutely. 110%. Let it be singing or dancing, or if they just want to play a musical instrument, if they train themselves, they'll just be more confident and it'll, it'll teach the child to be in front of a lot of, you know, people. And that's something mm. that children you know, it doesn't come to them. They are always very scared and it always takes them time to come in front of public. So I think that help, that'll help them a lot. It'll open some sure. doors as well. It'll open some doors, some opportunities, exactly. some opportunities. Yes. Exactly. Lovely. Thank you for Great. that. Yeah. Yes. So now uh, we have come to a very exciting segment of our show, which is the rapid fire. Uh, okay. So we're going to just ask you some rapid fire questions, Mariam. And like the right. name suggests, you have to give us the answers rapidly. <laughs> yes. So we'll start yeah. now. So it's our game show. Yeah. It's, oh, it's my our game show. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. I'm sweating. So are you ready? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Favorite song right now? Dil Chata Hai. Okay. Uh, tea or coffee? Coffee. Favorite snack food? Uh, chips. I know which one. Can I take the name? Yes, Please sure. Do. All right, Cheetos. Oh, yes, Ooh. nice. <laughs> uh, sneakers or heels? Uh, sneakers, 110%. Early bird or a night owl? Night out. Ooh. Maya Maya <laughs> or Despacito? Which one are you going to sing for Oh, us? my God. <laughs> uh, I would say Maya Maya, only because it was my first song. Okay. Amazing. I love that song, yeah. Very nice. So the floor is yours. We'll give you some time to sing it for us. Now? Oh, my God, okay. Mm. Maya Maya, glavi tare chunle sare chun. Maya Maya, ke jisse mo ke par do me dar do ke mare chunle. Maya Maya, alay yeh 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 yeh. Maya Maya, alay yeh 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 Wow. Fantastic. I wish I could sing like that. I'll give you a big round of applause for that. Well done. Beautiful. (laughs) It was super. Yeah. Thank you so much much for playing along with us. So before we wrap up, we would like to do our green pill moment. Okay. So for our (laughs) segment called the green pill moment, we'd like to ask you one question, something that Mm -hmm. changed your life or some inspiration or something you would have done differently or some advice you would give to somebody? What is your, what was your green pill moment? Okay. So my green pill moment is the fact that I grabbed an opportunity. Even though I thought that I wouldn't win that competition, I grabbed it. I still thought, you know what, let's just give it a shot. And that competition has brought me here today, which is why I'm doing this wonderful podcast with you guys. And I feel like any opportunity, small or big, is an opportunity for you to grab. So just grab it. 
because that contest has helped me uh, you know in ways that no one can ever imagine it changed my life uh, it changed my family's life and you know the fact that i'm a better person a more confident person is because of the job that i got because i grabbed that opportunity as a radio listener so yeah it hmm. could be anything that is Excellent. my green pill moment Lovely. Thank amazing, you for sharing amazing. that. <laughs> thank you so much. So um, thank you, Mariam. Thank you very, very much for sharing your fantastic and inspiring story with us today. I am sure our audience will thoroughly enjoy this conversation that we've had. And we have thoroughly enjoyed it with you. Thank absolutely, you so much. Absolutely. You guys next time are you have to amazing. sing that. Yeah, next time you have to sing the whole song for us. <laughs> Yeah, I can't absolutely. get you over it. It was amazing. Thank yeah. you. Thank beautiful. you so much. You have a beautiful Let me voice. tell you that you guys did such a fantastic job. Uh, <laughs> oh, thank you know, you, so you much. linked each and every question, which was great. And I loved, loved answering all your questions. I just hope I did a good job myself. You did oh a my super thank good you job. You're the expert here. Yeah. We're just exactly. learning. Exactly. <laughs> we just no, learning. You guys are great. <laughs> Such thank a good you so thank you so much. Thanks, Mariam. Now, Mary, before we before we say goodbye to you, could you please tell mm-hmm. our listeners where they can find and follow you? And we'll also put your links in the show notes as well. For sure. So on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook and YouTube, it's Mariam uh-huh. Kisat. That's M-A-R-I-Y-A-M-K-I-S-A-T. So that's my handle everywhere. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes Great. it a lot easier. Super. Easier, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was really Thank so you. lovely to have you today. We wish you all the very best and we're looking forward to seeing you in those acting roles. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. And I hope we get to do this once again. Absolutely. Uh, you know, because, and so I can share my Greenfield moment uh, next year telling you that this was my Greenfield moment and this was that yeah. opportunity. So <laughs> Yeah, we're Thank really you. looking Same. forward to that. We're really looking. <laughs> Fantastic. If you enjoy our conversations, please like and subscribe. See you next Wednesday.